What are life support systems, and why will we need them on Mars? Welcome to Micro Lectures by Living on the Red Planet. LivingOnTheRedPlanet.com is a website dedicated to sharing information about Mars and how humans will be able to eventually live there. What will it take? What will we need? So this is the first episode or micro lecture in a five-part series on life support systems. Our seed question is: What are life support systems, and why do we need them on Mars? So when you hear the word life support, you may think of somebody in a hospital hooked up to all kinds of machines, or you probably have seen it in shows where life support is never important until it goes down and something happens, the aliens attack, or something like that, and Jordy has to climb into the maintenance tubes and fix it. But other than that, it's sort of existing in the background. So. The life support that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about life support systems, which are exactly what they sound like. They're systems that allow us to be able to live, and we're going to be looking at really what humans need. But humans don't exist in isolation from the rest of the world, from the rest of what evolved here on Earth. So what we need is very close and similar to what many other organisms that we depend on and that depend on us also need. We're going to talk about two broad categories here, and these categories are our chemical physical systems. These are inorganic, the ones that you've probably seen or at least heard talked about in submarines, on the space shuttles, the space stations. These are ones that are relying on purely mechanical or chemical processes that don't involve life at all, except for the end user of that, of course, humans. And those are what we'd call inorganic systems. Now, our other broad category would be biological ones, ones which we'd call organic, and these are ones which use the processes of life. So we use plants or algae or things like that to produce oxygen. That then somebody like us, like an animal, would then breathe, and we have this exchange. So. In the literature, you'll often see these referred to as bioregenerative systems. You'll see the abbreviation CELSS, which is either closed environmental life support system or controlled environmental life support system, depending on who you ask. And these generally are constructed ecosystems. These are things that rarely are as complex as ecosystems which we didn't design. And they may be things as simple as some algae and a few mice in a closed container. And these are actual experiments that we've run. We've also run them on larger scales with humans and some other plants,、uh, with the BIOS projects, which were done in Russia. On a more complex scale, we've had the Biosphere Two, and the most famous of these systems is, of course, Earth. And Earth is a life support system which has taken to get to the point where it is now, and of course it'll continue and change and whatnot. But 4.5 billion years of life adapting and changing to create the conditions that we today need to survive. And of course, we are only surviving in these conditions because they are the conditions that are. It's one of those kind of hand in hand situations. So those are our two. Big categories that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about our inorganic and our, our organic systems. Another distinction, which is important to mention, is when we talk about systems, we have closed systems and open systems. Now, one can argue that there isn't actually any such thing as a truly closed systems, but for most practical purposes, we can say that a closed system is one that isn't receiving or Putting out energy or materials. It's more common to have a clo- materially closed system where it is receiving energy from, say, the sun or some sort of chemical process. And then we have the open systems in which energy and material flow through the system. Most life support systems are going to be a mix of these. The more closed you can get it, tends to be seen as better. But that's very, very difficult to achieve. 
So just keep those two distinctions in mind as we're talking about systems in the coming lectures. So to the second part of this lecture seed question is, why will we need it on Mars? Now, Mars and Earth are very similar planets when you look at it from the grand scheme of things. You compare Earth to Mars versus Earth to Saturn, and you'll see that you know Earth and Mars are very similar. We've got a lot of things that are really going to help us to be able to survive their similar composition, the day-night cycle very similar, we've got seasons, a lot of things like that. A similar amount of sun, Mars is further away, but it still gets quite a bit. But there are some important distinctions. And as we were talking about before, Earth has had 4.5 billion years to create the system that we're part of. And our species has had a million or more, if we start to count as before we consider ourselves humans, to evolve to need these particular conditions. So, as I mentioned, Mars has already got a lot of them. But there's some very important ones that it's missing. So we're going to have to design systems which meet those needs, those conditions that we have. And briefly, we're talking about things like gas. So what air are we breathing? Mars says air. It's got most of the components. It's got all the components, actually, that we need, but not in the right concentration. So we're going to have to make sure that we create the air that we're breathing. The atmospheric pressure, so the pressure that our body needs to be able to function properly and for our cells to maintain their form, their shape, and for some of our organ systems, such as our circulatory system, needs particular pressures in which to function properly. We also have a very narrow range of temperatures that we can survive in. And an additional one, which isn't included in all systems, but will be very important for civilization on Mars, for a permanent presence, is food. So in our kind of short trips, say some of us, we've got astronauts or cosmonauts up on the International Space Station, they're not making their own food there. They're bringing it with them because they're going for relatively short trips. But if we're going to be living on Mars permanently, if we're going to have colonies and civilizations, then we need to be able to make our food. So food can actually, what we're eating, if we're eating plants and things like that, um, and of course animals are involved as well, they can play a very important role in creating the other conditions that we need to survive. In fact, that's what that's how it works here on Earth. So there's a very strong argument that for long-term systems, we need to incorporate our food production as part of those. And that would be part of the organic, um, that would be an organic approach. So we've got our two categories. They are by no means at odds with each other. They, in certain circumstances, one approach, and again, these are massive categories, may be more appropriate than the other. But in most cases, we're probably going to find that a combination of the two, working with both of their strengths, is going to be the best approach. So in the coming lectures, next time we're going to talk about these specific conditions. We're going to go into more depth on them and talk about some of the ones that were left out that we will need to have on Mars. We're going to talk about examples of these systems that actually exist and have existed and what, how we can build upon that. We're going to talk about the different infrastructure which will be required, the resources that we'll be able to use that exist on Mars, and maybe some of what we'll have to bring with us to begin with to get those going. Then finally, we're going to talk about some of the specifics, what could really work, and get down to the nitty gritties of what kind of systems, what components we'll need to be able to build a civilization on Mars. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you found something interesting out of this. Looking forward to the coming lectures. If you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to join the conversation in a deeper way, please check out livingontheredplanet.com. You can contact me directly through livingontheredplanet at gmail.com or find us on Facebook. And until next time, keep on learning.